welcome to a discussion of Gardner Chapter 9. This chapter deals with the art of the Etruscans, the culture that uh, dominated the Italian peninsula before the uh, dominance, I suppose, of the uh, Romans, beginning in roughly the 6th century or so BCE. The Etruscans are the sort of first culture that we study on uh, mainland Europe and the Italian peninsula and are uh, fascinating for a number of reasons not least of which is that we don't really know as much as we really would like to about this culture. And um, the other reason, I think, is that they stand in an interesting relationship to the classical tradition as it developed in Greece in the 5th century. So this is an extraordinarily sophisticated and co complicated culture, uh, which uh, clearly had a relationship through trade and other uh, means with classical Greece and perhaps even as far away as Egypt. and. Uh, yet we really don't know much about its language or its history, except as it's preserved by the Romans. The first thing that we really should turn to to understand the Etruscans is the temple idea, as described by the architect and writer Vitruvius. It uh, has some interesting commonalities and some significant differences with the Greek temple idea. Among other things, we might begin with materials. The Greeks preferred, of course, uh, marble for their perfect home of the gods. And the Etruscans were interested in more functional, uh, closer to home uh, materials, such as wooden uh, columns and sun-dried brick, materials that the Greeks uh, simply wouldn't have considered for uh, temple architecture. We see a uh, pretty limited set of entrances to this temple in the front only. And this frontal focus is typical of a lot of Roman temples in general. That 360-degree aspect that's so common in Greek uh, work is pretty much absent in Roman. Uh, temples. This may have something to do with uh, uh, Etruscan uh, religious uh, practices, the way that the priest would conduct, uh, say, sacrifices or look for omens uh, off the front porch. may have something to do with that. Uh, another interesting thing about this uh, temple structure, and remember this is a reconstruction based upon uh, perhaps a few archaeological finds and, and verbal reconstruction. The other interesting thing is the sculpture uh, that is uh, decorating this um, structure is made of terracotta and put on the peak of the temple roof, which is not a typical location for Greek sculpture. You might recall the uh, triglyph and metope or pediment arrangement. Uh, the Etruscans favored a different kind of location, which seems to perhaps affect the form of those sculptures as we see in figure 9-3 with that image of Apollo or Apollo. Uh, which, as we come sort of on a closer scale here, uh, shows us another significant uh, difference with uh, Etruscan art as compared to the classical tradition in regard to sculpture. As you look at this particular structure, you see, or this sculpture, I should say, you see none of the repose or uh, rationality or harmony that uh, dominates, the, say, the Greek classical period, certainly around the time in Greece that this was uh, made, say, the early 6th century, you see a very different emphasis. The Etruscan sculpture is much more active, much more uh, sort of energetic and dynamic in nature, and uh, has a, a sort of vigorous aspect to it that is almost never seen in Greek art, really, until the Hellenistic uh, period, which is, I think, quite interesting. It also is a remarkable technical achievement, uh, given the material of terracotta. You might recall, for instance, the terracotta army with the uh, uh, Chinese um, Chinese art history, uh, there might be some comparisons to make there in terms of ability to work with uh, work with clay. A similar command of the medium is seen in the uh, sarcophagus of the reclining couple from Cervateri in Italy in the 6th century, where we have this uh, remarkable image of a husband and wife uh, seated together in a posture uh, that was typical for dining uh, in uh, Etruscan, later Roman uh, times. Uh, this particular image is remarkable not just for the ability to depict arms and hands and so forth in a remarkably lifelike fashion, but also for its uh, portrayal of a husband and wife in a clearly happy and uh, genuine relationship uh, together in the same space is very, very uncommon, perhaps only seen really in some of the Egyptian uh, works we've looked at, uh, Khmer and Nebti or uh, Akhenaten uh, and, and his queen children. Uh, and so it's really quite uh, uh, remarkable to see uh, just how close uh, these two uh, individuals are, very, very different uh, from Greece. And one of the aspects, I think, that I'd like you to take away from Etruscan art is that sense of 
respect and interest in uh, the behavior, the phenomena of everyday life. We know a great deal about the Etruscans because of uh, funerary structures. Uh, for instance, we have a number of uh, essentially necropolises, uh, cities of the dead, reminiscent, I suppose, of the Egyptian style, but very much less formal, uh, dug out of the tufa, this underground rock, in uh, uh, the area really of Tuscany uh, today. And uh, they are remarkable for a number of reasons, not least of which they seem to reproduce domestic architecture. And they're also decorated with remarkable reliefs and paintings, as is seen in the interior of the Tomb of the Reliefs, uh, everyday household implements, rope, uh, what we see is an axe, vessels of various kind, even what appears to be a guard dog to keep things uh, in order that way. And of course, the remarkable uh, paintings, such as are seen in the Tomb of the Leopards from the late 5th century, I should say early 5th century, uh, showing a banquet, uh, the attitudes of the uh, individuals are very similar to that uh, sarcophagus that we looked at. And the beautiful uh, arrangement of pattern and color is very reminiscent, interestingly enough, of Minoan art, a, a theme that's sort of uh, revisited in that diving and fishing uh, scene in figure 9 9. Uh, again, a remarkable sense of the uh, energy and dynamism and color and rhythm of uh, nature. Very different, I think. Uh, from what we might expect in such a dark and uh, underground setting. In uh, sculpture, later uh, Etruscan sculpture, we see another uh, aspect of that interest in energy and even ferocity, I suppose, in the Capuline Wolf. This is, again, early 5th uh, uh, century thereabouts, showing an uh, image of an animal, uh, which is very, very uncommon in Greek art, particularly around this time, the focus being on the human figure. The wolf is shown in a remarkable, this female wolf, in a remarkably uh, vital pose, kind of on guard and even a little bit ferocious, uh, very reminiscent, I always like to say, of a uh, dog uh, waiting for its dinner. And um, this uh, is, I think, something uh, typical of Etruscan art. The same thing is found in the Chimera, figure 911, Chimera of Arezzo, uh, where we see this fantastic mythological beast depicted with remarkable uh, uh, intensity and, again, ferocity. And uh, the last thing I'd like to look at is the Aringatore, the orator, Aule Matele, which shows the degree to which um, Etruscan art has adopted the norms of uh, classical uh, statuary, and particularly that of Rome, as we look at this orator clad in the uh, Roman toga, r everything depicted in very realistic and lifelike fashion down to the boots, and uh, that hand raised in gesture.